As you can see, there's quite a few components to making a resin cast, and I'm gonna go over each one of these. Um, and just keep in mind that this is what I'm using currently, um, but I'm always trying new things and always adapting. So um, as of this video, this is the stuff I use, but it is subject to change down the road, just depending on uh, what new discoveries I may make. The main component of a resin lure is of course the resin. And currently I am using Smooth On Smooth Cast 325, which is a two part resin. And um, I find that it makes a really smooth copy of my lure. And so I've been really happy with it. As far as mixing uh, instruction goes, it has a one to one by volume, but I don't, I don't do it that way. I always weigh it 115 parts A to 100 parts B. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more later on. This does not have an incredibly long shelf life, so you don't want to buy this and then just leave it on the shelf forever and ever. You do need to use it fairly quickly. They do make some, um, I think it's a spray that you can put into this part A to make it last a little bit longer. But I always like to just do some casting and, and just use it all up if I can in a pretty pretty quick period of time. As it says right here, the pot life is 2.5 minutes. Uh, that's how long you have to stir it and get it in your mold, um, which is not a real long time. I found it to be plenty. And then it says here cure time is 10 minutes. I usually give it a, a good bit longer than that just to make sure that it sets up in time. But you also need to mix in microspheres with that resin. And this is what makes your lure float. And even if you're making a sinking lure, you want some of these in there to keep it upright in the water right? You always need opposing forces in the lure. You need some buoyancy at the top and some weight at the bottom, and that's what keeps it up and down in the water and keeps it from blowing out when you're, when you're reeling it in. Um, I've used different kinds of microspheres. However, this System 3 brand uh, is giving me smoother casts, so that's what I've been using lately. And you can play around with the ratios on this. Uh, if you put too many in there, it gets too thick to to pour into the mold. Um, if you put too few, obviously it's not going to do what you want it to do. So you kind of have to do some experimentation and some playing around to get it just, just the way you want it. Um, the next thing is the silicone mold release. I like to spray this in my mold before I pour some resin in there. What it does is it it makes your uh, lure come out in the end a little bit easier and it helps preserve the detail um, on your carving here. If you don't use this spray, your, your mold will just wear out a little bit faster. Of course, you need to have a good scale, good digital scale so that all of your measurements are correct and accurate. You're gonna need some disposable mixing cups uh, to mix all your resin in. And then I like to stir with one of these uh, flux type brushes. Uh, because I found that if I just use a stick to stir in a cup, it doesn't get down in these corners and I don't mix my resin properly. So I like to use a brush because it'll get down in those cracks and crevices and it'll really mix it well. And since you don't have a whole lot of time to work with, you don't want to mess around. And then of course I've got a couple of blocks of wood. Um, when you put your mold together, you'll see that it's, it's flexible. And you don't want it to flex in any kind of weird direction. So I like to put a block of wood on either side. And then I secure it with these rubber bands so that that mold doesn't flex around. That holds it in place exactly the way I want it. And then I'm free to just pour in there. And if the, if the resin heats up and expands, it kind of holds it together a little bit better than just using the mold by itself. Another quick note about resins, uh, I know Smooth On does make some resins that you can add pigment to if you wanted to uh, cast your lures in a certain color. This particular kind is going to come out white, but I do know that they make some that you can add pigment to. You just want to check that out on their website to see which ones uh, are compatible. One of the cool things about resin lures is that you can save yourself some time by doing a little bit of prep work. You can actually go ahead and install hardware. This, this is not designed for this particular lure, but you can go ahead and pre-bend your wire, set it in there and close it in there. You can also add weight to it. And then when you close this all up and pour your resin in there, you'll have pretty much a finished lure by the time you're done. 
that does take a lot of trial and error to get the weight right and in the right place and all that, but it will save you a lot of time once you figure it out. Now, for my first few uh, casts of this, what I'm going to do is just cast a straight up resin lure with no hardware in it, no weight in it, nothing like that, and I'll I'll add all of that afterwards just like I would with a, a wooden lure. So let's go ahead and cast one of these up so you can see what that process looks like. If you want to support the channel and look good doing it, you can now get your official Zimtex merchandise. Just click on the store tab or the link to my website in the video description. There you can find everything Zimtex, including gear, links to the products I use, and other cool stuff. To get ourself in the ballpark as far as the amount of resin that we're going to need, we're going to use the water displacement method for calculating volume uh, that was developed by Archimedes. We need to place our bowl on the scale and zero it out, and then we can pull this bowl off of there and get a glass of water and put it in the bowl. I'm using a glass because I know it's going to be big enough to hold my, my lure. We need to fill that all the way up to the top to where it just about is going to bubble over. Okay, that's as full as I can get it. It's just about to go over. Then I'm going to take my lure and I'm going to plunge it into that water and let it overflow. And then I will place this back on the scale and measure the water that came out. And I'm getting 32 grams. So we're going to write that down. All right, here's where we got to do a little bit of math to make sure that we get the right amount of resin and micro balloons mixed up. We're going to add around 20% on top of that just to make sure that we have plenty of resin. So we'll round that up to 40 grams just to make the math a little bit easier. Next, we're going to take 10% of that 40 grams, and that's going to be the amount of microspheres that we're going to use in our mixture. So that 10% is going to be 4 grams, and we'll subtract that from our 40 grams, which will give us 36 grams that we can divide between parts A and B of the smooth-on resin. So the instructions say to mix 115 parts of A with 100 parts of B by weight. That gives us 215. So 36 grams divided by 215 equals 0 0.167, which we can then multiply by 115, which gives us 19.3 grams of part A. We can also multiply 0 0.167 by 100, and that gives us 16.7 grams of part B. Add those together just to double check the math and that equals 36 grams. So for me moving forward I'm going to go with 19.3 grams of part A, 16.7 grams of part B, and 4 grams of part C which is the microspheres which when you add them all up equals 40 grams. It's very important that you put part A in a cup and then part B in a separate cup, but you need to add the microspheres to one of them. And it doesn't really matter which one, I don't think. So I'm going to be adding this to part B, and I need 4 grams, which you'll see is going to be quite a lot. Next, we're going to stir all those microspheres into part B until it's smooth. You don't want to stir really fast because these micro balloons are very light and they tend to like to get up in the air and they're probably not good to breathe in. So I'm going to stir real slowly 
I will say ordinarily I do wear a mask while I'm doing this just to be safe, but since I'm trying to talk to you, I'm not doing it. But that's why I'm going really slow. Once it's all liquidized, then we can speed up a little bit. We just don't want to stir those up into the air. And get that as smooth as possible. And the reason we're doing it this way is it will save us a ton of time in the mixing process, time that we do not have. So once that's smooth, let's get everything lined up and ready here. Cause this is going to go pretty quick. I'm going to dump in part A. We want to make sure we get all of it in there. Okay. Now we're going to stir this up pretty quick. Now you have two and a half minutes. I usually stir it very thoroughly until I start feeling heat through the cup because it will start a chemical reaction here that will generate heat. Just be sure and get in all the corners of the cup and scrape the sides. You want a real good mix. All right, that's good. Now we're going to pour it in. Okay, yeah, I overestimated by quite a bit. So next time we can reduce the amount that we mix, but to give it a few taps, just to dislodge any bubbles. And then we're gonna let that set up and uh, we'll come check on it after it's had time to cure. It's been about 10 minutes. I usually like to leave it in there a little bit longer, but for the purposes of this video, let's go ahead and open that up. When this is newly poured, it's going to be warm and it will still be a little bit flexible because of that. And so I like to leave it in the mold so that it can cool down and hold its shape a little bit better, but that's all right. Look at that. You can see here where some of the resin went up the uh, sprue hole here, and that's good. That's exactly what we want to see. Because if we didn't have that, there'd be a big void right there and a void right there. All right. Let's see how the other side looks. Very good. Very good. Let's get in close there so you can see some of this detail. I'd say that's a pretty good copy. So if you do have any um, blemishes or problems, you can patch it with some good old Instacure and baking soda um, and then sand it and you won't even know it was there. So yeah, that's a pretty nice copy. I don't see really anything wrong with it. Before you do anything to it, you want it to cool down really well and harden up. It's still kind of flexible. You can see these sprues are very flexible. Those should be hard and stiff. So we're going to let this continue to set up. And um, then what we can do is sand these uh, ridges off where the two halves of the mold come together. We can sand that gently off all the way around and we can cut off these sprues, sand them, we can cut off this funnel uh, bit right here and then sand it just like we would a wooden lure. And when we're done with that, you won't even know it was there. And then as far as installing hardware goes, I treat it just like wood. I'll do some uh, twist wire, drill it in there, epoxy it in. It seems to perform just as well as wood does. I will say as far as painting considerations go, since you have been using mold release and things like that, once this is all hardened up and you're ready to do some painting, you're going to want to wipe this down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol just to get all of those uh, mold release and oils off of there so that your paint will stick properly. But that's all for this video. I'm going to make another video talking about hardware and ballast. So you want to keep your eyes open for that. But for now, we're going to wrap this one up and I'll see you on the next video.
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so I can make more of the content you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.